Estate Investors Show. I'm your host, Trevor Young, along with my fellow host and partner in crime, Mr. Dan Caldwell. And man, do we have a special guest in store for you guys today. Our featured guest is internationally known on the microphone for his hit song, Ice Ice Baby, which has sold more than 100 million records worldwide. And for the past two decades, he's continued making record sales, not just with music, but also as a real estate investor, where he fixes and flips luxury homes for huge profits, as can be seen on his hit TV show, The Vanilla Ice Project. We're super excited to have our guest on the show today. Please give a warm welcome to the Ice Man himself, Mr. Rob Van Winkle, a.k.a. Vanilla Ice. Welcome Woo! to the show, Rob. How you doing today, brother? What's up, Good Rob? To you guys. Good to be with you. Man, yeah. we're, we're super excited to have you here, man. I tell you what, when I was talking to Dan about season two and, and the guests that we wanted on the show, man, you were at the top of, top of my list. And so, man, I am just pumped and excited to have you here. I'm honored, brother. Happy to be with you guys, man. And Dan and I go way back. So, yeah, it's all gravy. Happy to yeah. be with you guys, man. When he said that to me and I said, you know what? I just happened to have Rob's phone number on my, in my phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we go way back, times. man. <laughs> great times, great times. That's yeah. it. That's it. So Definitely, we, man. we've been uh, we, we've been chatting a little bit also about real estate, Dan. So over the yeah. years and stuff, I know you dib and dab and, and and making things happen. So kudos to you, man. You know, you're on you another have level, a lot of though. Holes in the water. Those those huge houses that you do, man. That's another level. That scares me. That's a, some that's some scary stuff right there. You well, can't I make got... mistakes there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I wish you. you, you they do happen. <laughs> uh, oh, I costly. bet. Yeah, I, bet. I, I mean, but you know, with me, it's all on how you buy the house. You know, and uh, if you buy it way below the appraised value, you stand a chance to make a few mistakes along the way, and maybe put a little bit more money into it than most people can really do. But uh, you know, we don't really have much of a ceiling out here uh, for comps in in Palm Beach because it's ultra wealthy. So right. I just, you know, I fish right here in the big fishing hole. So. Nice. You no, know, as long as you do it in a way that kind of caters to the people that you know are in the neighborhood, you know, like you, you do your little research about it, you know, and if you do it in the right classy way, they usually love it. It's turnkey. They want to walk in and you know just kind of see themselves inserted there. So you know, I've I've had letters written to me and stuff talking about they're going to renew their vows in the backyard. Thank you for this That's house. Awesome. I'm not going to change anything about it. You know. I'm, you made my dreams come true. I could have never come up with all these ideas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's like, it's crazy rewarding that I never thought I'd get, you know. It's, uh, it's a lot of work, as you know, because we sure. build them, you know, from ground up. Uh, I'm into this now 31 years, so I got my GC license wow. uh, 20, 26 years ago, and I went to design school 18 years ago and got a degree. So for me, it's, it's been a long time. So I worked my way up from the small homes and I started off around the three, $400,000 homes. And then I found a way to just kind of barely get by my first few deals. I I just kind of broke even, but you and I know is, you know, breaking even if, if you go to Vegas and you come back after a couple of days and you break even, that's a win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, for me, I, I chalked it up, you know, I learned a lot and I learned that you need, I need to buy these homes much lower, much lower. How can I get them? So right. I started researching. I, I went to Borders. I read all these books. And, uh, you know, I, I really researched uh, this guy named Robert Sheeman. And I read all of his books. And it, it really taught me how to make money in different aspects of real estate. And so now, um, you know, I used to build homes. Uh, I, I First, I was, you know, building them. It took me 18 months to get my return on the money. Obviously, uh, in 08, was bad for a lot of people with the housing crunch, but it was actually great for people like me because I could buy these homes that, you know, for pennies on the dollar. You know, you saw them back in the day when, um, when they had snakes coming out of the pools and cockroaches out of the walls and they're in these nice neighborhoods, but they're not there no more. Everybody bought them, banks sold them, they got rid of them. But I found a little loophole on how to buy homes and every home that I've ever bought that I've made money on, you'll never see them on MLS. You'll never see them on uh, Zillow or anything truly yet none of the stuff you think is going to be online none of these homes are ever going to pop up on. and the way i find them is i i hired an attorney a tax attorney a real estate tax attorney after reading the book from robert sheeman and i said right. listen i need to know how to you know make money on all aspects of the real estate sale on the closing on on the mortgage part everything so you know i, I long story short i i i figured it all out and i i 
found a way to monetize all this hard work because it is hard work. Right? Yeah. And the best way to do it, man, is to buy these homes so low. So I researched and I found out in 08 that a lot of these smaller banks that held these mortgages, they went, they went under and they sold their entire, um, you know, their, their entire portfolio to banks like out of India, anybody that would bid on them. And, and these banks out of India bid on these, uh, you know, portfolios to buy these whole banks out. So now I found a way to go to the courthouse and find tax liens. And these tax liens, uh, some of them, you know, you can, you can acquire them in, a, in an easy way. And some of them take a lot of red tape. There's a lot of red tape and it's very hard to get. So I found another way where, how can I enter into these Indian auctions? <laughs> so I figured out how to enter these Indian auctions that have bought these homes. And uh, we wake up at three in the morning, we got coffee and donuts and we're, we're going at it, you know, uh, on the computer. And every time you hit the enter button, it's, you know, $10,000 increments. So I get, I get my attorney to go to the courthouse. He brings back to me all these houses that are on auction. I can look at them real quick, you know, and, and scan them and stuff. You really don't get a chance to go see them and kick them, kick the tires. But you can really look at the, uh, you can look at Zillow real quick and get a Zestimate. That's pretty close to doing an appraisal on it. So you right. kind of got a, a, a good idea on what it's worth, right? Right. So what I do is I take these, I go on this uh, auction. And I'll get a really quick glimpse. I got two people working for me. That's it. And they're, they're great. We've been together 25 years. Nice. Made a lot of money together. And we'll have our laptops. I say, check this property, so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, she'll check it real quick. I said, what's the appraised value? Bam, it comes back real quick. Okay, it's popping up on auction right now. Bam, bam. Get my, my game finger ready on the, you know, <laughs> yep. on the button there. And I found a way to actually get them because every time you hit the button, somebody else somewhere is bidding against you. And you know what you're going to end up. It's going to be way below the appraised value. But what I do is I sit there and I wait to the last 10 seconds and I hit it like a video game. You remember, Dan, back in the day yeah. when we, Atari, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I hit that thing and I don't care where it comes in because I can't hit it fast enough to go past the appraised value. And then when it comes back, it'll say, okay, your time is up and you won, you know, the bid. And if you win the bid, you look at, oh, what did I pay? You know, and I paid, I paid probably 400,000 less than the appraised value. Nice. And that's unheard of. You're never going to find that on Zillow. You're never going to find it anywhere unless you really go out and research and do some, you know, the, the, there's so many deals on homes that are just not online. They're yeah. not like you think. And there's some red tape to find them, which is why everybody isn't doing it. But if you just do a little research and you wake up with, you know, uh, you know, some sort of passion and a drive and ambition to do this. And that's what I did. I just, you know, I got interested in it and I, it just became more and more. And I was like, geez, man, you know, you can really make a lot of money doing real estate. So I bought a mortgage company. Now I own a mortgage company. I'm, I'm every house I sell, I, I do the mortgage on it. <laughs> wow. You're making it's, the money coming and going. That's awesome. Yeah, so, you know, you, you, and then on the closing deal, I got a closing company that gives me half a point. So, I mean, you know, everywhere there's yep. money to be made. We do that too. That's, so, that's, that's, that's so, that's so much insight for everybody listening because they can see there's so many different ways to spin that ball. And, uh, and, and, you know, we, we continue to try to give them different options, different options. To, to make money and to, to, to start their business. But let's go back to like, you're coming out of music. Let's, let's, let's go back to that point. You're yeah. coming out of music. Um, you know, you, um, you're, you're trying to figure out what you're going to do next. What, what did that look like? Where, where was your head at? Well, uh, <laughs> And not like, that you were, you were still doing music, obviously, because no, no, I, I, totally I bought it albums when after when that. 16. When I was 16, I did Ice Ice Baby. And then probably around 19, the Ninja Turtles and all this big, you know, hysteria just came out. It was great. You know, it was amazing. Bigger than life itself, bigger than anything I could ever predict. Right. Uh, you know, and then, you know, it's like riding this big, giant wave of success. And then, you know, it's like surfing. Sooner or later, the ride's over. And you're going to hit the, 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 the shore, you know. And that's what I did. I hit the shore. But most people kind of stay on land and hit the shore and say, okay, I'm not going to do that again. That hurt. You know, I crashed into the shore. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm the kind of guy to pick, pick myself up, get the dirt, dirt off my shoulder and swim back out and catch another wave. <laughs> and go. that's what I've been doing. And uh, my wave has been, you know, with real estate. Uh, music is amazing. I, I, I've made great, great, you know, uh, amounts of money and fame and success, but none of that does anything for me today. You know, it was great at the time. A lot of hard lessons, a lot of... Uh, you know, regrets and just lifelong things, you know, that have happened.
But uh, one of the greatest things, you know, because there was a few years there where, you know, it was like a snow globe. It was all shaken up, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know anything, man. I didn't know how to separate my real life from this artificial life, you know, of being a celebrity because it is artificial. It's right. You know, it's, like, it's artificial. Anything you see on TV, it's all artificial, all that. <laughs> so I had to find out who I was as a real person, you know, and figure out after all this is over, what is my meaning and what's my purpose now? <laughs> you know, yeah. so I kind of got the dirt off my shoulder, man. And I stumbled upon real estate because I had owned a house there in LA uh, up in Laurel Canyon next to Michael J. Fox. Yep. I had that one like four or five years. I, I had a, a home in, uh, you know, up on Snowbird. I, I, I snowboard and motocross, everything. So how homes all over, right? Probably about eight, nine of them, multi-million dollar homes. And I never used them. I never even saw them. I went on tour. I, you know, once you sell your soul to the, the entertainment world, you know, <laughs> you got to you gotta commit. So yeah. I was gone. I never even saw them, never used them, thought I would, didn't. I got home and I go, what a mistake that was. I just lost millions. I, I'm like, that. What a, I'm a dumb rock star that just blew my money. Wow, I would have done that. <laughs> Let's sell them. I sold them and I made millions. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, let's go buy some more. Right. So I don't to say shit, but. And uh, we went and bought a bunch more, man. And I really got into it. And I paid these decorators a lot of money to do it, you know. And I just kind of followed their their back and paid them some big checks. And I was like, man, if I could just learn to do this myself, I could, that would, you know, because that breaks into your profit. So I learned how to make the profit by doing it myself. And I went to design school and got a degree. And I figured out how to really look at demographics and where you're buying these homes and how you really target certain people, you know, families and friends, you know, you got to have nucleus i always call it the nucleus because you know you got to have stuff like that you know the bigger homes that are cheaper on the outside side of town they, they're not as desirable mm -hmm. you know almost 20 to 1 they'll, they'd rather live on top of each other especially here in florida and i i don't desire that i got a big 12 acre property i got a helicopter sitting in the back i don't need to complain you know neighbors complaining and stuff you know on me <laughs> i'm a dirt yeah. biker right so but, but a lot of people, they don't care. They come from New York here to New York, uh, to Palm Beach a lot. And, and just even the, you know, the communities and stuff, they'll, they'll buy into these big multi-million dollar communities. So they feel safe with their kids running around. They got good restaurants and they're, you know, they're five minutes from the beach, the airport, everything, all these nucleuses add up. Right. And you know, today and every day, I always say location, 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 that's the most important thing. And for me, it's really worked out. I, I know my area well here in Palm Beach, and, and I've done things other places, but nothing has been better than here in Palm Beach, man. It's just, it's just a hot spot. For, you know, I got a bunch of fishing poles in the water. You're going to reel in something, you know? I, I, so I hear, man, it sounds like everybody's making their way to Florida, from what, from, from what I can tell. And I can't blame them with the beach there and everything, for sure. But well, they're man, trying to get out of California. Yeah. Hey, it's crazy out there right now. It's a snow globe all over again, you know? It'll settle. Everything will be okay. You know, it's the fear of the unknown that panic people. And I'm not a person that panics. I'm a person that uses not a fear of the unknown, but I use the excitement of the unknown. I like right. it. Yeah. I don't need to know the answer to everything. I don't want to know it. I'll figure it out as I go. But most people panic when they don't have an answer to everything, you know? Nobody panic. We've been here. We beat, listen. We beat the smallpox. That's been the worst thing that's ever hit the human race since the existence of Neanderthal man. <laughs> so this is nothing. It'll settle. Masks will come off. Everything will be fine. Economy is already jumping back. You know, I don't really do politics and stuff, you know, because I don't have time. I work too much. All the time it would take me to form an opinion about this guy or that guy didn't really appeal to me unless they pay me enough. <laughs> so for me, I go to work. I wake up very early. I'm 5 a.m. guy. And I make things happen. And that's, you know, that's kind of my whole motto of life is if you've got, you know, this right here, you can, you can make money. You know, my mom always told me, you got two hands, you'll make money. That's Get out there and grind. And I, my motto is if, if you don't grind, you don't shine, you know, and 100%. you can't sit and marinate too long. You got to put that money to use if you made it one place. Cause you know, as well as I do, bills don't stop coming in. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> so the answer to all your money problems is make more money. I don't also, uh, one, one, one thing I read was um, <clears throat> when the money runs low, people start to tend to shift to um, a way of thinking that's just, a, they call it a cancer, a toxic way of thinking, and it's saving money. Women are notorious for that, and they're supposed to be. Men are not. We are <laughs> right. opposite. We are the men, and we have to be 
you don't want to take any of that negative uh, creative time to try to learn how to save money because with that same amount of time that you're using to put forth to saving money, you could have put forth to making money. Right. So it, it's, it's, I read these things, man, and it works, you know, these, these, these little books and stuff that I read and just with a cup of coffee and borders, I go to seminars all the time. I learn things, you know, I'm one of the guys that bought the Carlton Sheets course way back. Oh, I, I had ago. that too, brother. I had that too. <laughs> I remember that. For sure. It's a different world, man. But if you just, if you have a desire, you have a passion, you know, you'll find a way, you know, you'll find a way to do things. Look at you, Dan. You came from nothing, man. You marketed right. You hit the right timing was everything. You, you hit it with the right product. You hit it with the right everything, man. You, you fit in better than OJ's glove. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a you're such a smart dude, man. That's that's what I remember about you. Last time I talked to you too, is that like I came I came away from the from that just man. This guy has such insight and he's so smart. And you just adapt exactly like you said. I mean, even to the point of I want to touch on this design school. You actually went to design school to get better at, at your craft. I mean, yeah. that says a lot about you. Tell us about that. Well. I didn't want to tell my friends at first because it's a little friendly, you know, but, but the way I was doing it was money. It was all about money. You know, I didn't want to say, hey, man, I'm going to this design school. I'm talking interior design. And then that led to CAD program, which is what I do now. And then I build these swimming pools on this new 3D program, which blows my mind. Oh, my God. Technology keeps going so fast. It, it really, it's unbelievable. We can build the entire house now, the swimming pool and the sun, the shade, everything. And you can see it and I can move a tree and everything and I can duplicate it. Almost like 3D printing. <laughs> You want to right. see something? Look, look at this. I just built this one. So this is a house I'm building. It. I got like a lazy river here with a tiki hut. This is old. Oh, that's tight. What, we, I, what I did is I bought this property next door because I had to I, I fly helicopters. So I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to have my neighbors complain. I needed a certain amount of property. So the guy was mowing the grass. I went back there. I said, I'll make you an offer. You can't refuse. He said, no way. I'm not selling this place. <laughs> And then I ran, I drove out and he said, 200 grand more than your house is worth right now. And they said, sold. And then I built this one. <laughs> you built another house next to you? Yeah, this is all, this is all my house. I call it the compound. So I built all wow. this. I got a big hanger with, I got my original 5.0 Mustang out there. Oh man. That's, I got the helicopter sitting right there. Absolutely. I bring clients over here. I take them to the Bahamas. I go to Bahamas in 18 minutes, and we land. We have conch salad, play some dice. You can play craps right. there at the Hilton and uh, Bimini, and then we're back at the sunset. That's I'm telling you, man, it's a good, good playground out here. But these people, these billionaires, they all want this. It's a lifestyle you sell, you know? Yeah. And if you go out and you find the right ones in the right areas, man, and you, you deck it out for them, they'll pay for it. They'll pay for it, you know, in a big way. And this is the airplane hanger I put. Uh, put it in here for hurricanes but right there's the original 5.0 wow oh, look at that look at that that's wow. crazy i didn't know we were gonna you get got to it today that's awesome that's, that's insane man <laughs> never get rid of it wow God. never it's like it's Is got you there dude i'm the oldest i'm the oldest teenager in town when i sit here. <laughs> wow Beautiful. Digging plates too. I swear, I'm still the oldest teenager in town. <laughs> this is Earnhardt Senior's first race car when he was 21 years old. Wow. Really? 21 years old, man. He rode the race of that car. That's called the Saturday Night Special. There's a man. whole book and everything on this car. It blows me away. Yeah, what's the, what's the, I love what's, cars, what's the car know, like that go for? I, I have fun with all that stuff. This Ooh, car here is over a million dollars. But it goes up more more in value than, than houses. And, and what's that you got back there in the corner? Is that a Model T? This one right here? I think I think I saw something there in the corner. Or something a little older. It looked like a Model T or something like that. Nope. Uh oh. Hang on. I'm losing audio. It's okay. Now, Are hang you on. I'm coming. I I lost you guys. If you can hear me, I don't know. Yeah. We yep. Can now, now I got to get out of there. Steel, steel building. I forgot. <laughs> That's steel nice. building. We, we appreciate the tour, though. That was awesome. I figured you'd get a kick out of that. 
but you know what I, what it is, is like, you know, like I was telling you with the real estate, man, you just, you, you, you build stuff that, you know, I'm building one right here next door. I'm uh, tearing that one down. I got another one. We had a uh, showing the other day. We had seven people in one day. We had just happened to ask them where they're from. They all said New York. So New York is coming here in like a tidal wave right now. Getting out of there, all, man. They've always been coming here, but you know, you always got to have, like, I got a small team. We're efficient. And, you know, we, we really, you know, try to research areas they're coming to a lot like uh, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, you know, when he bought the trains, everybody said he was, he was losing his mind uh, because, you know, back in 09, I believe they were losing a billion dollars like a month or something on the train. And he bought it and he goes, listen, it's simple math for me. He goes, the population is growing and people need goods. It's that simple. It'll catch up to itself. And sure enough, it did. He made billions and now he owns all the trains. Yep. You know, the guy is unreal. He's one of the, he is the greatest investor. And I follow a lot of his, you know, tactics and stuff. Green. People need homes, man. They, you know, and there's just a shortage of them here. There's so, I sell homes so fast. The, hot, the market is so hot right now. I've never seen it this hot ever. Now, do you just, do, do you ju do you just flip there in Florida or are you doing them anywhere else? Uh, this, I do them right here in Florida and Palm beach, actually. Just Palm Beach, because this is the this is the spot for me. But I've done them everywhere. I do them everywhere else. I've even California, even. But uh, seems like everything's way overpriced in California. But you can still find them. You can still find those Indian auctions in California. Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah we do homes at like four hundred to six hundred uh, in That's, California. Those are money makers. Those are the ones you flip fast. Right. Yep. They flip fast. We have that formula. We flip fast, and uh, and but you know everybody wants to do what you're doing. Like this is, it's cool and you make money, but what's exciting is when you see this beautiful house with this pool and you're putting in the pool and you're redoing this house that looked like, you know, like it was outdated. I mean, we have a lot of houses. I live in Malibu and every house in Malibu is outdated, every single house. But I, I just, I, I, I probably don't have, I do, but I can't do what you do right now. You know, I, I would have to do, I would, I need some extra training. I have to go sit with you for like six months. And just and just carry your water bucket around for you, you know, and figure out how to do it because <laughs> there's they're another level. It's scary, you know, when you're buying a three million dollar home and trying yep. to turn it into a six or seven million dollar home, or yep. you know, but it can be done out here. And Malibu, I think, is a great place because it's untouched, and yeah. people don't care about when it comes to buying the right house. It's like you said, they just want to walk in, turn key, and look at the ocean, and they have yeah. the money to do it. So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So if I show up at your doorstep one day with a water bucket come on yeah. I'll, I'll give you a no I'll why i just back. carry you. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what hey. was that like what was that like transitioning i think you mentioned me how to do all that stuff hey you tell me i've got a tool belt that'll fit you perfect <laughs> come on in dan nice oh uh, i'll knock knock nails i'm good i can do it yeah. I'm not against getting dirty. I'm not against that, getting dirty. You know, that's part of the fun of it, you know, and, and to use it as an art. And, and when you have fun, a lot of people look at it like it's a pain in the ass. They're not built for it. You know, you got to be able to kind of handle that heat out. It gets hot out here in Florida doing construction. It's crazy, you know, and uh, it, you know, it's, it, you got to dig down sometimes, you know, to do it all, even me, you know, and I'm orchestrating everything and I got to wake up and put out 9 million fires all day long. It's, it's kind of what I do. And most people, it, it drives them crazy. Me, I like it. It makes me feel alive. I still got time for my family, my kids and fun and, and enjoying life. You know, it, it's, it's just, you got to know how to manage your time and you got to know how to manage it in, in a way that's, you know, efficient to where it's effective. You know, you're not burning time. And that's what I learned yeah. also reading those books at Border is how to make, be real effective at doing what, what you need to get done. How do you? And I'm telling you, Robert Sheeman's a good one. Nice. I was gonna tell, how do you? I hear the kids. Tell me that's about. awesome. Oh, man. They wake up, dude. They wake up. I love it, bro. That sounds just yeah. like my house. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you when you got little ones, man, there's no prediction. They just wake up when they want to wake that's up. That's it, man. Always expect the unexpected. I love and it. And with COVID and everything, we're all on lockdown here. So yeah. it's, uh, and, and our, we, we live in a, we have a couple different places, but when this COVID thing hit, we decided to come down to the beach house. It's not quite as big, but it's all open. And we have beautiful windows everywhere and nothing but ocean views. So it's, it's a lot nicer to be down here. But man, I'm telling you, 
the kid, we got these fires going right now. It's ridiculous. Oh, so I know. We're looking to come to Florida too. Hey, you guys don't have fires, do you? No, not like that. <laughs> I, I know Malibu. It's probably the most beautiful spot around that whole area. I mean, it is. And uh, the fires are crazy. I, I recorded a record up there, uh, Dean Jensen uh, studio that had burned down probably nine years ago. But uh, I know about the fires, man. That was a legendary studio. Corn did their all their records there. Slipknot, oh, wow. you remember all that? Yeah, all of done yeah. That studio. Dean Jensen, legendary Jensen Audio. He had a studio up there. It's all wood. Been there forever. Right. Since like the fifties or whatever. And then, yeah, just lost it all, man, to the fire. So that's yeah, sucks, that's a, man. I don't history even know right what there. to say about that. That's some yeah, a lot of history that's, just lost and gone. But uh, yeah, we got we got humidity. You'll have to get you know, about a year before you adapt to that. But uh, <laughs> what, what you do is you learn you learn to go to the water more. You know? Oh, I when bet. You, when you got the humidity, it just makes you want to go to the water more. So we got the yeah. water right there. You jump in, man. Cool off, you know. But uh, it's a great, you know. It's a it's Florida's good. We got palm trees, pina coladas. We got you know beaches and a lot more room to grow than than California. You know. Yeah, I'm not trying to sell it against California because there's some beautiful spots in California, but Florida's got the palm trees too. <laughs> and that's a kind of the lifestyle we sell here, you know. I, all these people coming from New York, like I said, dangling the you know, you have a fishing pole in the water, and, and on the bait, you have this you're selling the whole lifestyle of the pina coladas, the, the, the you know, the lavish, you know, we got the breakers, uh, it's the only six star hotel in America right here, you know, built in 18 late 1800s crazy you know ballroom dancing was invented here you know wow. palm beach we sell that to all those wealthy people and they come here in droves man and if you can dangle the right bait in front of their face they buy it they buy it oh, and they'll bid. i started a bidding war on this house i had the other day I, I sold that one and went and bought two more just bought a lot today so i got 1.7 acre lot and i'm building a uh, wraparound plantation home on it That's and i'm gonna beautiful. sell it Nice. And now, so, Palm Beach, is that where Trump's got his place down there, Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, yeah. Trump's here, the resident president. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. He's kind of a pain in the ass because we have to detour around all of his house when we used to just, like, I, I live right down the street from him. So I would just go straight downtown. I got to pass his house, right? Mm -hmm. Now I got to go out on the causeway about eight miles out of the way and come back in. They got it all blocked off. Yeah. But no, nah, whatever. Hey, Mar Largo is a beautiful place, though. Let me tell you, that place, whew, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's got, that, got to bring them in, too, right? Oh, my God. That place is – it was owned by the Post Serial family. And just the piano alone in there, they sold it furnished to Trump. He, he had some kind of weird deal back in the 80s. I think he paid, like, maybe 16 to $20 million or something really ridiculous for it. You know, it's well worth over $100 million. But this uh, piano that he has inside his house – has been there. It's a Steinway. It was played by, I don't know, man, Mozart or something crazy, right? They, they assessed this and they did a story on this piano that was in the house. And it is actually worth double of the entire property in the house. Are the piano alone me? Really? is the most valuable thing in Malargo. That's insane. And there's some artwork on the wall too, some Van Goghs and some stuff in there that's just re be beyond ridiculous amount of money. Gold sinks and toilets. Right. <laughs> That's insane. He made some goodbyes in his days, too, when he was out there hitting the real estate. Uh, he's a real estate champion, man. That guy is definitely a real estate champion. I mean, Did you buy one of his it. books when you were first starting out? Did you get one of his books? No. Uh, no, but I've, I've, you know, I've followed him. I'm not, listen, I don't, I don't do politics. I don't vote for him. I don't vote for Biden. I don't vote for anybody because I vote for uh, the pina colada party. Like I told you, I'm, yeah. I'm not into politics. But I don't have time for it. It takes too much time, and I don't make any money on that time. It's lost. Like I told you, time management is important. Too many people take too many things too serious. I see that. We only live once, guys. It's a short life, man. Make the best of it. Why get caught up on all these little things and, and different things? Don't, you know, I just look at people like they're just too, just too uh, I don't know what do you call it, man. Too lonely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too much time on you their know, hands if they're messing around with some of that stuff. And just, I would just manage that t time better and figure out a way how to be successful and enjoy life. And honestly, it's not about having all the, the, the big mansions and, you know, helicopters and stuff. It's not. It, it, happiness is what it's about. You know that, Dan. Yeah. Come on, man. I was happy when I couldn't even rub two nickels together and I'm still happy. It's just about a frame of mind and how you do it, you know? 
you got to enjoy life and, 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 and understand that and appreciate that this is all you have. Make the best of it. Don't get caught up taking things too serious or, you know, spending too much time on politics when they're not even paying you unless you're a politician. <laughs> It's so true, Rob. I mean, it's so true. Like, you're, that's, uh, you know, I would say way beyond your years, but you're like with me too, man. And it's like, we, we grew up quick and uh, you're, we're not, we're not young bucks anymore, but we're still having fun every single day. And I never look back. I don't know about you, but I, I never like to look back. I'm always looking forward to what I'm doing next and uh, what's in, what's, what's making me smile. Um, can we go back to your TV show? Let's go back. How did your TV show come about? Because were you flipping homes before your TV show? And how did the TV show happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I flipped way before the TV show. That's, that's kind of how it did happen. Um, actually, they did a, a deal on Fortune magazine. And they, they, uh, it was just a real estate thing that, uh, that I had, uh, they picked up on that I did. Uh, th this guy named Matt Levine out of New York for Departure Films uh, had did a bio on me. And one of the questions on the bio, was how did you not end up like MC Hammer? <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, uh, I went to work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how MC Hammer, I, I just went to work, you know, and I found a passion and I love real estate. And, um, you know, when I, find, when I did these things, I was like, you know, this is just all parts of trials and tribulations along, tribulations along the way of life that you need to just keep grinding. Like I said, you got to grind to shine. And, you know, if you don't stop, it'll happen. If you have an ambition, you have a drive, you'll push forward to make it happen, man. But, you know, you make the best of everything, even this corona crap, you know. it's It's been, you know, altering for all of us, you know. But uh, we don't have any control over this. All I can do is work around them and maneuver around all the obstacles thrown at me and, and deal with it. And that's what I do. I don't, I don't frown on it. Don't let it get me down. I'm not upset about it. I don't get too opinionated on it. I just just conform and go through it because I still got a mission on the on the opposite side of all this. That's, that's right. And it kind of goes back to what you were saying just a minute ago with, you know, so much negativity being out there on the news and, and all the po politics and all that stuff. And it's funny how if you just take a moment to shut all that shit off, man, life just goes back to normal in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I tell you what, when I'm not watching the news – my life is, is exactly as it should be. You know what I mean? I, I don't watch the news. All hell breaks loose. So when I got with Matt Levine, he says, Rob, um, can do, you know, they did a small, like, a, I, I think you might remember this. Uh, it was like behind the music, VH1. Right. And they had a thing on there or something on there. He, he did on a bio on me and he says, uh, you know, that Vanilla Ice does real estate. So he calls me up. I didn't change. I haven't changed my number in like 30 years. You know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still got it. Yep. You got it. You still got yep. it. And, uh, so I, I was like, hey, Matt, how are you? And he goes, hey, I did that bio on you, blah, blah, blah. And I says, are you still doing real estate? And I said, yeah, I'm about to close on this house actually tomorrow. And he says, can I fly in tomorrow and film a little B-roll? I said, why? He goes, ah, we're just, I just want to catch up with you and see what's going on and, you know, see what's happening. And I says, okay, come on in, man. I better get here early. So he got here early, filmed a little B-roll. Before he got on the airplane to go back, he called HGTV and said, this guy's flipping homes like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, he's got his whole business together and he's been doing it already for almost 12 years before they came to me. So I've been running with the TV show now for 11 years. Wow. And, uh, it, you know, it fuels me to kind of show people what's the next thing, you know. So I spend a lot of time uh, in the early years of doing the Vanilla Ice Project going and um, like to CES, Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas right. and going to the build shows and everything and learning what the new technology is and building and walls and efficiency and you know solar panels and all the new technology <clears throat> and then after that i started getting bored with what america was offering everything on aisle 10 seemed to be kind of a trend you know yeah so i went to uh latvia and estonia and i went to the builder shows there and i went to russia and helsinki of all the crazy places really? just check out what kind of stuff they're building there because i remembered when i went through there as a kid when I was uh, touring as Vanilla Ice, I would go through there and see these lavish lobbies and hotels that would just blow me away. And I picked up on it. So I said, they must have some cool, you know, design styles there. So I went and I found a lot of that stuff and I kind of incorporate that on the last five seasons of my show. So I really go a far away to kind of show people some of the new stuff that, you know, might be coming out. Like um, when I built this one, this is a theater here. 
200 inch screen, but this is obsolete, man. I went to CES and they, we're introducing it for the new season coming out on the Vanilla Ice Project. It's called uh, Wallpaper TV. You might have seen it already. It's a, you can make your house look like Times Square. I mean, it's it's a flexible wallpaper and it goes up and you just put another piece together and then you can make any size you want, 4K, 1080p, whatever you want. And it's it's just the new thing that's coming. So flat screens are gone. We're going to start introducing that. I remember I was introducing smart homes and, and things before Alexa came out. Like we had these little microphones and stuff. We, were, we thought it was so cool. We we're like, look, we can tell our lights to come on. We can tell our oh, smart wow. to turn on and our sprinklers. And now it's gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. You can do everything, you know. I mean, not just thermostats and stuff, but, you know, I can make my, my landscape light look like a disco light outside. I can turn it on and just <laughs> walk out the back and say, turn it on colors. And, and it comes on all these colors. It's crazy. But, you know, technology is amazing and it's fun to kind of experiment and find out what's next and what's coming. So that fuels me to put that in the TV show and everything. And I build homes that are not on TV as well. I build lots of homes that are not on TV. And, and they're still, some of them are as lavish as, as the stuff we do on TV because, you know, these people, they just want what I, what I put on TV. I get out there in California, actually in Malibu, there's a company I buy my car turntables from. You might want to check this out. Exterior car turntable and it sets down in the pavers. So you just drive right over it without going on a lump or anything. Right. And then your car will rotate and then you can get in and out of your driveway a lot easier and stuff. I've so seen those I, out here. I'm telling you, I've got them lined up. I put one on the show and now every one of my friends that I built a house for, they're all friends of mine. They come to my parties. They, uh, they want one. I'm like, oh my God, man, you really want that thing? It's like 400 grand. <laughs> you want that? Yeah. I don't care. I want a car turntable. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. But, you know, it's fun. You dangle that stuff in front of them, they want it. They just, you show it to them, they'll see it, they'll say, I want it, I don't care what it costs. That's where I live. Most places in America are not like that, right. you know? So you need to know your location, you need to know your, your price zones, and you need to know your comps and know your, you know, appraisal values, which is the most important thing. You got to buy the home way below the appraised value. Even if you buy it right at the appraised value and you start putting money into it, paint, carpet, and everything, you're still above. You need to come out below even after you've done your paint, your carpet, or whatever kind of, you know, modifications you're going to do. You need to come still below the appraised value. That's how you make money on it. That's right. So would you say that for somebody that's just getting started with real estate and or real estate investing that, you know, knowing your numbers and, and having your numbers is probably the best advice that they should focus on prior to maybe searching for the deal? Is that where you would start? Never get your heart. Never let your heart into it. Never look at the house that you're buying is only for investment only. You have to always remember that. It's not for you. Don't paint it the color you might like. Paint it the color that the demographics of the area will like. Is there a school there? Is it class A schools around it? That's important, you know? And you want to make sure there are earth tone colors and throw pillows in there. Because let me tell you right now, a big secret on one thing I learned about at, de uh, at design school. Every single sale of every house that I've ever sold has been to the woman. The woman decided. And you know why? Because I make closets with rotisserie shoe racks for ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I make closets that you can oh, walk man. in and it's automated. Ferrari design. Oh, man. Ridiculous. Don't show that to my wife, please. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Every person, every man that bought the home says, oh, I wish my wife didn't see that. Because <laughs> I, cater, I cater to the woman. I put floral print in the carpets. If I do special uh, carpets and stuff, I put floral print in it. I make it, the bathroom, the guy gives, no, doesn't care. We're all about efficiency, man. The faster we can get in and out is the, the guy method, right? Women, they want it all. They got the bathtubs. They've got the, you know, 12 shower heads and everything, you know, the big closets. That's, that's what appeals to them. And that's what I do. So when I build my properties, I, I cater to the woman, the bigger kitchens, the cabinets, a walk-in pantry is extremely important, you know. So little details. I put these real expensive cabinet pulls on that I actually make myself. They got Swarovski crystals in them. And it's just a cabinet pull. But the, every single lady that ever comes in every house I build, they all will go, wow, look at the cabinet pulls. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, I get so much attention out of those damn cabinet pulls. Yeah, I use them in every one of them, and it works. Little things, you know. <laughs> uh, so many times it's the little things for sure. Yeah, that's that's so smart, man. Uh, I, I yeah, I can only imagine if my wife saw that it'd be game over, man. I'd be in Florida tomorrow. That's uh, hey, you, that's you're so welcome smart. to come anytime, Dan. You're hey, so tell us brother. tell us a little bit about um, uh, you're in your tenth season of the show. Yeah, and uh, you got over a hundred episodes. 
you know, that's crazy. That's a big landmark, especially for television. You know, now it's, uh, you know, with all the digital stuff out there, it's not so important, but having that hundred, uh, that, that allows you to get syndicated. And uh, I'm sure your show's doing it because it's such a great show, especially any real estate investor, all the real estate investors love that show. It's like one of their favorite shows to watch because they love to watch oh. your amazing houses. I think uh, I was, you, I saw something about, you were talking about your, um, uh, it was some lighted tiles on a pool or something. And, Low in the dark, yep. Yeah, I was like, you know, it makes me, I was like, oh, I got to get those. You know, every since <laughs> you see something like that, it makes you want that for your house. Even if you're not moving or you're buying one of your houses, if you're just watching the show, it's exciting to watch the show just because you see all these ideas that it gives you for your own home. Yeah. Some of my friends are mad at me a little bit because they watch the show and I'm they're like, why are you mad at me? I says, man. You told me to watch this show. I said, so what's wrong with that? They said, listen, my wife, I haven't been fishing in a month. I'm used to going fishing every weekend. Now I'm putting in backsplashes in bathrooms. <laughs> That's so true, man. I, can, I totally see that going down. I, I, it's funny. I'm, I'm good friends with Adam Sandler, and I've actually got Adam Sandler doing things around the house. Like, you would never believe people. Get out of here. Yeah, he wanted to tackle. I mean, any, you know, it's not about just paying for it and have someone else do it. you got to have the fun of doing it yourself. Because you appreciate it more, you know. You, at the end, you sit back, kind of cross your arms, and go, "I did that," you know. Yeah. Even if it looks like shit, you still I accomplished <laughs> something. I accomplished yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, there's a little wave in it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, you got to start somewhere, yeah, man. man. I've if been you get there. the passion for it. You build on it, and you have fun doing it. You know. That's right. The whole thing is the more fun you're having doing what you're doing, the better it, it gets. You know. And I'm, I'm honored that people appreciate what I'm doing out here for ten seasons. I never even predicted one season. I didn't even want this TV show in the beginning to be honest with you i didn't want people to think i was normal <laughs> you know because you think of people like musicians back in the 90s and stuff we were always kind of like mysterious mysterious you know like who wants to know the story of the east coast and the west coast rappers and tupac and uh you know all these stories of everything you know and now it's not so much you know it's cyber world it's different but it's crazy how everything evolves you know but life goes on man and here we are you know we keep keep grinding and making things happen man that's right. That's right. I want to kind of go back real quickly to, to something you had touched base on uh, just a little bit ago with regards to time management and staying focused. I know that for myself, for, for many years, you know, focus was a problem. And I think it is for a lot of, a lot of folks and, and time management and just staying on track and being able to maximize, you know, every hour, every minute of every day, right? And so how do you go about keeping things on track, staying focused and, and really maximizing your time you got to wake up early and you got that little piece in the morning to get your thoughts together get that coffee uh -oh. going get your thoughts together and get what your agenda is uh try not to be a guy that goes to sleep thinking about all of it because you'll have racing thoughts and you won't get a good night's sleep you know i'm vegetarian 17 years um you know i'm clean I've, i you have to have everything when i read these books it tells you that you need to be in good health you need to be to to accomplish all this it's a whole package it's not just oh i got a dream of doing this but i don't want to do that part of it or this part of it you kind of need to do it all to really be successful at a level that you want to get to and that's it health body mind you get up early in the morning man you put your agenda together and you, you start you know taking steps towards making them happen and putting out fires like i said earlier man you know it makes you feel alive i love the excitement of the unknown i love i love just waking up and having something to do and something you know to get after and try to you know accomplish accomplishment is everything you know which is why you don't really harp on what happened yesterday you know the record sales and all that it's fun i look back on it i look at my 50 i have the memories I, I can tell you every girl i dated in that car and every burnout i probably did you know but you know <laughs> i still love that same passion and feel for what i do with the houses you know and you kind of apply that and i'm very competitive because i race motocross so you know, I'm always out here competing. I go to auction sales and I see a lot of these same guys in there. They got a lot of these hints from me on how to come and figure this out. And I'm like, oh, now you're bidding against me. And I taught you how to do this. You know, get yeah. out of the room, man. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> you're costing me money. <laughs> but you can't keep a good secret quiet forever. So, you no. know, uh, we put it out on the TV show. So they've been coming a lot now. My auctions used to have like maybe 10, 15 people in them. They got 30 now. But uh, it's all right. You know, it's enough to go around. And you just got to stay competitive. That's about it. Definitely, you definitely, no doubt, I can, I can just tell you operate from a point of gratitude. You're very grateful for, for, for the things that you have. 
And, and I think that that's really awesome. And I, you know, because here's the thing is that we all know that, that some BS and bullshit's going to come at us at some point on any given day. It doesn't matter what it is. And I think that whenever we're able to start that day off with, from a point of gratitude, then the, and just, hey, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to be able to take on whatever's coming my way. Then we're able to maintain uh, ourselves and, and really just keep things flowing and, and, and make, th- make shit happen because bad shit's going to happen. we got to be able to pull through. And I think having a grateful mindset it, it keeps us there. Yeah. Listen, if every day was great all the time, you wouldn't know it and you wouldn't even appreciate it. You have to have the down sides and the, the down things to appreciate, you know, the good, the good sides of life, you know, so it kind of weighs everything out and keeps it in a yin yang balance, you know? Right. Hey, but, Rob, uh, tell, tell us, tell us about what, give us your worst, what's your worst deal, or worst project you ever had, like for real, you know, it doesn't even have to be on the show, just your worst project that you just like, you know, maybe even kind of put you on the sideline for a second, put you in the, in a bad frame. I was holding, I, I was holding a lot of land and real estate during 09. And that hit me pretty hard. And it took me about a year to adapt. And every penny that I had lost in value on the properties that I owned, I couldn't sell them for what I paid for them. So I marinated on them. I just set them aside and I didn't focus on them. Because if I'm not going to be able to sell it for what I got in it, I don't want to sell it then. I'll just pay the taxes on it and float this thing. And then hopefully Warren Buffett gave me the right information that eventually it'll catch up to itself. Right. And sure enough, they all did. And they passed themselves. And I've, I've had, you know, properties for 20, 30 years. I haven't even, I got to look at them in a piece of paper in a filing cabinet. I forgot about them. Mm-hmm. Because they were so under at some point that I moved on. And I adjusted. But what happened is I made all the money I'd lost in those properties back by adjusting and learning how to flip properties so i could buy homes uh cheaper than i could build them you know so i go wait a minute this is going to work out because i when i build my homes i build spec homes i've got four you know model homes that i can build starting at the million you know go up to six million and we you know and it takes me 18 months to get my return on my money now i can go buy a home in three months and flip it and i I can make my money faster and i can buy it for less money with the home on it than i can build the thing and the land it's like already done so right. I learned how to adjust to that. And I was like, okay, so I can take these old houses and really just gut them and, you know, make them all modern and new again and then flip them. And I, I started doing that. And now the market has changed again. You always got to, you know, kind of keep up to date with the market and the changes because it's either a buyer's market or a seller's market, you know, right. and you got to pay attention to that close because you don't want to be holding on to a bunch of, you know, inventory that you pay too much for yeah. when it turns. So I learned all of the, uh, how to adjust really fast and really quick and how to kind of see the future a little bit. One thing I read in one of these books is how to piggyback off of the corporations that already do the biz, big business meetings and follow their, uh, guidelines like Walmart. So here in Florida, we have these master planned communities where they have the golf courses already planned out. They've got the roads, the walk water, sewer remains, all that's all done. And there's nobody even living there yet. And people wonder why are they doing this in the middle of nowhere? And it's because Walmart already decided they're building a store there. And if they are, believe me, they've done the research enough to know that, uh, you know, and a lot more money in their research than your research. They can <laughs> right. piggyback off them that there's going to be people moving around it. If they build it, they'll come. And sure enough, I got some insight on information on where they're building these Walmarts before they build them. And so I start, I hit it so big in these areas. I mean, I was doing 12 a year, easy, 12 homes a year. Yeah. New construction? Just, all new construction. Okay. And building 12 at a time a year wow. for, and That's... killing it. Unbelievable. And then it just seems like the water starts running out, you know, and then it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I need to back off a little bit. I see that it's kind of the, the word got out. The funnel is getting a little bit less and less. So you, you, get, you get the insight before it happens. Don't sit there and wait and hope for better. Right. Shift, shift gears. And that's what I do. I shift. And I found another master plan community just like that one five years down the line. And I piggyback on that. And I did the same thing in another area called Northport. I did it in Port St. Lucie. I mean, all, all over Florida, you know. Right. But there, there's a lot of piggybacking you can find out in these books, too, on how to research what they're doing and where they're putting another. I look, it sounds bad, but I even buy homes. I look in the obituaries. I find it. I walk up to people's homes sometimes here. I saw a home that was in the middle of uh, Manalapan, which is Billionaire Row. 
And this home, the grass was 10 feet tall. I, I walked around just a little bit on the side. I could see the swimming pool had black water in it. Nobody's taking care of this property. Right. But there's lights on. Okay, I drove by it for a week. I went up to that thing finally, and I met this physician in there whose wife was in there on hospice. Mm -hmm. He was 80-something years old. And I said, listen, it looks to me like the house needs, you know, if you're thinking about selling it, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, make a nice offer, which was to me. To him, an offer, you know, was great. He's like, oh, Vanilla Ice, it's you. Come on in my house. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Cuban physician. He probably owns the house out, home. right, at that point. Almost. He goes, he showed me the house, and he even showed me the room where his wife was in hospice. I said, I don't need to see that. I'm, I'm cool. I did it. I understand. <laughs> and I made him yeah. an insulting offer, and, and, he, and he took it. And that was season five or something on my show. But uh, I, I paid like $2 million. That house was appraised at 4.3. Wow. Even with the 10-foot grass in the pool with the black water. That's it's sitting insane. next door to a $20 million house and a 15 on the other side. Wow. Sandwiched between them. I was like, uh, yeah. When we hit that, I knew before I even did anything. The house was beat to hell. It was horrible. Right. But, you know, I made it beautiful and perfect. 8,000 square foot home between, like I said, those very wealthy mansions and uh i sold that thing for a record amount of money that just whew, i saw the whole thing the minute i saw i closed on it i knew i was going to make good money on this one wow that's and a turned, that's a great deal for a wholesaler too well the, the thing i learned about this one was was how to defer my taxes i got to pay a lot of taxes here on these big multi-million dollar properties and when right. you float them you don't want to float them you want to get rid of them so then i learned about um how to how to deal with the taxes and how to uh buy 1031 exchanges so right. I, I found a lot of other billionaires that know that here. And you have to kind of have a little in, in group with some of these people that understand how it works. But you, you can actually legally do a 1031 exchange where you won't have to pay the 2% sale price of the, you know, sale of the house on a $6 million house is, you know, quite a bunch of money. So a lot of money. Yeah, so you can defer that and do a 1031 exchange and then use that money you would have paid the IRS to build your next home. So I took that and I, I built four homes after that. Sold all four of those too. So it really works out. You just compound. Compound from one to the next to the next. And I worked my way up from the small homes to the medium size to the bigger to the bigger. But I never took that money for myself. The minute you do, you got to pay taxes on it. Mm -hmm. Keep it in there. Keep it in the houses. Keep floating it. You got 18 months to flex it and go to another one and you won't pay any taxes on it until the very end, if, unless you want to cash out. And the very end, when you cash out and the money comes to you, you're going to pay taxes on it. But you've used all that money you would have paid IRS to buy all those homes that you made that money on. So all kinds of little tricks of the trade. Now, do you find those houses, those two or $3 million uh, houses that, that you're going to flip, do you find those to be more intimidating than those two and $300,000 houses, I'm sure? Is it, is my you, first one was <laughs> my first it. few of them were because that's a lot of money you know right. yeah no not now not at all I, confidence you have to be confident you have to believe in what you do man you can't go in there half believing you're gonna get a half fast nope. you know ending so you, need, to you. You, you will you need to go in there with confidence you have, you have you know if i say you believe it you can achieve it so you got to go in there with confidence and make sure that you believe and you've researched it enough to understand that your all your chemistry adds up to this is going to be a good money maker for me you know, keep your heart out of it. Keep your own uh, style out of it. Keep what you think you might like out of it and look at the numbers. Look at all the demographic numbers of people moving into this area and then as opposed to moving out of this area. And when you see those areas that are really hot and growing, we put a little tax on it on our, in our office and we'll, we'll, we'll target those little areas because more people are moving into those areas and the housing, the, the sales are coming in more in these areas. So we target those areas. It's important to do the research. A lot of people just use their own insight. They, they think, oh, I'm going to invest in the area that I know because I know this area. I've been driving around it for years. I, I, that's a nice home. I, I take my kids to school there. I've seen it. I passed it. It looks like it'd be a good home that I'd like to flip or something. You know, That's not really the way you need to look at it. You need to look at it, the numbers. I buy homes and sell homes that I've never seen. Never even seen one. I, I'll buy them and sell them without putting paint, carpet, anything. Just because I bought it so low below the appraised value that I can turn it for 200 grand the next day. I'll do it. And, I, and they still bought it below the appraised value. You don't think somebody would pay $100,000 below the appraised value? If I paid three hundred dollars below, I can still sell it to them at $100,000 below. They jump on it. And I just walk away yeah. with two hundred grand without doing nothing. Nothing. Man, you can print That's your own great. money in real estate, bro. I've been doing it for 30 years here. It is amazing. <laughs> real estate is big. 
That's for sure. And anything else, no doubt. Oh, uh oh, there's mommy calling. Mommy's got that salmon ready. Nice. <laughs> she got my. Hang on. It's okay. We lost your video for a second. You lose me for a sec. One second, guys. I'm coming back. It's okay. We see there. ninja. Bam. Ninja. <laughs> That's what shows up when you when you sign on. Ninja. <laughs> and you're, you're you're quite the ninja of 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 flipping homes too, right? Right now. You know you're what it killing is? It's it. Dan, it's interest, man. I was interested in it, so I just kept diving into it more and more, and then I became talented at it because I was interested in it. You know, I used to go to sleep thinking about it, wake up thinking about it, and I was like, geez. And it all sparked off about, you know, just buying those homes and selling them and making money on them. And I was like, it's that easy? And, and, it, and it really is. It really is. I mean, the market was much better back then when I just bought them and sold them like yeah. that. But, you know, right now, when you learn how to buy them, you know, and adjust to what the market is today, there's a, there's a good way to make some good money out there if you just put the time and effort in. Man, uh, check, so out, check out, uh, there's, there's some websites you can check out about tax liens and how to invest in tax liens. Right. Just check that out. And then and check out some of these auctions out there because there's some auctions that uh, really will surprise you, man. I mean, I have a translator on one of these. They don't even speak English. I was, was going to ask you and, about and that. I, I pay the translator $40. It's nothing. And right. they tell me everything that's going on and, and I find it and I get it. And there's some red tape involved in to enter these auctions. You have to have all the money up front. You have right. to have a, either that or a letter of credit. So if you have, you know, good credit, you can have that letter of credit and still enter in this auction and still buy that house for 300 grand below the appraised value. Right. Um, and there's those little auctions. They don't advertise them. So you're not going to really find them that easy, but a lawyer, a tax lawyer or a uh, real estate lawyer can find them. They're at the courthouse. Every property that's been distressed over 18 months, the, the country steps in and, and has to make sure that something gets done on behalf of that. So it doesn't just sit there and rot. Yeah. So there's a process of, you know, making sure that these, these auctions go to place and the government, they, they'll do it. They, they back it. They don't want to own the homes. They want people to get in these homes, you know, at any cost. And they'll take just, the, the, when you buy a tax property, it means someone didn't pay their income taxes, not just their property taxes income taxes has been seized. They don't want to own and seize the property. They don't want to have it. They want, they'll sell it and, and they get rid of every HOA lien, every mortgage, every second mortgage. It goes away. And all you do is pay the IRS whatever taxes that are owed on the property and they give it to you. Right. Cool. Yeah. And you might have to pay the attorney 5,000 bucks to go in there, to give him a retainer fee. He'll go in the courthouse. He'll come out and he'll present these uh, houses to you on a list. And you'll be like, He'll be like, you still owe me my money whether you buy a house or not. Because <laughs> I went in there and did my job. So you pay him. You got to throw a little, you know, out before you make a little. So you get, you get in there in the courthouse. You get him to present these, these sales to you and find these auctions. And you start tracking them down. I'm telling you, you'll find it. You'll find it. Uh, no, There's a hey, lot Rob, of money out there if you just find that it. Is, that is such great insight for everybody on here. Like even for me, like I, had, I mean, I, I've heard of them before, but I've never, I've, I've bought houses on the, on the courtroom steps, you know, cash ready. Um, but yeah, I mean, to hear that is inspiring. I'm going to go back and check that formula out again. Um, if yep. you know, can I ask you if you had, if you, all this is inspiring for all the people listening. And, uh, if you had, you know, there's a lot of guys that are just starting out. There's people a little more seasoned on here. If you had one piece of advice for all of them, what would, what would that be? Man, if you don't grind, you don't shine. Nothing's going to land in your lap. You got to get up early and get after it, man. You have to have a purpose. You have to have a meaning. And then you have to have drive to make all that stuff happen. So get your health right, you know. Um, I remember when I raced motocross, um, I came in, I think, fourth place. And my stepdad used to take my bikes and clean them for me, put the tires and change the chain and the oil and all this stuff, right? He'd take me to the races, unload my bikes. And I came in fourth place. But out of like 40 riders, I thought it was all right, right? Right. He comes in. He goes, you can bring yourself next week. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I didn't come out here to watch you get fourth place. I go, there's 40 riders. He goes, there's, there's three riders that beat you. He goes, you got fourth place? I did all. I changed your tires. I, put, I cleaned your air filters. You come in fourth? You can enjoy yourself. And don't think that I didn't know you were at your girlfriend's house last night till 2 a.m. Uh, <laughs> I go, he knew you, you would let off the gas a little bit. 
and and so, he was calling he goes, you on if, it. If I don't see you every day practicing, I'm going to show up there. He did. He showed up. He was there. He says, if you're not showing up and you're not practicing, I'm not showing up and changing your tires. You can handle this yourself. I didn't come out here for fourth place. Sure enough, honey, I can't come over tonight. <laughs> 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 what so do you true. want more? What do you want more? Do you want that piece of ass that night more than you want to win on the motocross race this weekend? That's what my dad told me. And I said, no, I want to win. I want to win because uh, the winner's going to get the ass at the end anyway. <laughs> and I'm just saying, absolutely. I was a kid, so that's how you think as a kid. You know, when you're 14 years old, you, you know, it's hard to get the woman out of you. You know, the girls are everything. So uh, you have to stay committed. I learned it with Ty Murray when I rode bulls too. He says, I don't want you out here riding these bulls. This is a serious thing. You know, if you, didn't, if you can't commit, don't come out here. You're going to get hurt. You have to commit. So whatever it is that your dreams are, whatever you want to do, however you want to achieve in life, you have to commit. You have to commit. It's not going to land in your lap. Sorry for that. I can talk your ear off on that. But, yeah, it's all positive vibes, man. And just, you know, stay positive and always remember that smiles are contagious, man. And just you know? take action, right? You know, I think that's where, where too many folks probably get held up is that you're, they're just afraid to, to put that foot down and, and just go. You know, and that's it, man. You always got to remember, you got to pin it to win it. <laughs> right, you got to pin it to win it. You know, you, you can't just sit back and let, you know, wait for things to land in your lap. I don't even know anybody that's won the lottery. I know they do, but I don't know anybody personally in my group. Yeah. I never met anybody really that won the lottery. Make All I know is the people that live around me and everybody I see worked for what they got. Mm -hmm. You know, I know so, I'll never win the lottery. I ain't never buying a lottery ticket. So I ain't banking on it. Winning. I ain't sitting around waiting on it. I'm going to go out and make my own lottery. <laughs> man, I, hey, thanks so much, Rob, for jumping on with us today, brother. You're very welcome, um, man. Anytime, where, man. Where can everybody catch you? And when does the season uh, – you have season 11 coming or season 10 coming? Season 10 coming. Uh, we're supposed to start filming in September. I actually have the house waiting right now. I can't wait to get on it because I got to pay taxes on this thing. But uh, yeah. they, they pushed it back once, and now I got to – I hope they don't push it back back to next year you know problem is is nobody in new york wants to go in the city so hgtv the headquarters are kind of empty right now they're kind of all working out of their house and you know it's it's because of uh they don't feel safe there right now mm -hmm. so that's another reason they're all coming to florida right <laughs> where can everybody find you where's the best place to find you you have any uh new books coming out information products anything we can pass on to any uh, listeners oh God. i've got funny things coming out i've got a I've got commercials coming out for Tide. <laughs> really? Hey, good for you, a Tide man. Tide commercial coming good out. Good for you. Um, Hog and Dawes, progressive commercial things, you know, silly stuff, but, uh, you know, they're fun. And uh, what do I got going? I got my TV show. That's my main priority. You know, I yeah. do that. That's for real because, you know, they film me doing what I really do. It's all my money. I have to, you know, really look after it and make sure that it's protected and stuff, you know, so um, it's a lot of work and it takes up a lot of my time. I still play concerts, you know, we do the i love yeah. the 90s tour with salt and pepper and color me bad and really we got, we got you, naughty man. by nature on this and we've got uh who else is on it coolio naughty by nature tone loke young mc like all the stuff you hear at a wedding all the it's great the most oh it's a great show man so oh, when I we bet. get back up and running and, and we're out of this corona mess we're gonna continue that tour so awesome. just having fun man enjoying life chasing my little two-year-old around <laughs> you know, i'll have to check y'all out when you come to dallas for sure yeah, for sure. You better, man. That's hometown right there. Lots of love to Dallas, man. My mom is still out there, brother, sister, everybody. So awesome, man. Awesome. I've been out here in Florida 35 years already now, but yeah. Getting too damn old, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I know what you mean. Well, Rob, Live young, man. Live young, like Sinatra said. Yeah. Rob, we definitely appreciate you stopping by, man, and, and hanging out with us for a bit. Definitely giving our audience a lot of insight today. We appreciate you dropping those value bombs for them. And for us, I've gotten some great notes and some great insight. And, and man, I'm just super appreciative and grateful to, to have you here today, man. So oh, thanks again. I'm honored. Till next Hopefully time. we can get, get you on after season 10. Hopefully we can get you on again. You bet, man. Anytime, Dan. Hey, let me know. It's good chatting with you guys, man. Okay. Like I said, I get, when you guys are talking about this stuff, I'll talk all day. Man. Oh, I love it. Found it's great. great. Good chatting with you guys. Okay, man, thanks, sure. Rob. Take Anytime, care. Anytime, brother. All right, you guys, be good, man. Take care. Stay safe. See you, Rob. See you.